Okay, I'm just going to make one up today. So I'm just going to start off plain water all over the paper using the large height brush. And then raw sienna, burnt umber. Just sort of trying to leave a sort of lighter area down the middle. A bit of ultramarine as well. Probably just stick with those three colours to be honest. And what I'm going to do is dry it and then re wet it and try and continue it. Sort of doing it in two layers, sort of thing. So, this will be the first layer. Keeping that centre lighter area. So, what I'm going to do is give that a quick dry. When I re-wet it, it's going to look a right mess. The paint's going to go everywhere, so I'm just pulling it tight to make sure it's make sure I've got a flat surface. Paper stretch slightly. So with that flat again, I'm going to clean the brush. Give it a quick clean, and then basically just start again, just as we just started. Re-wet it. Back in same colours. Let's get this nice and dark. Ultra, ultramarine, burnt umber. out, a few white clouds out in the sky. Another one underneath there, maybe some up there as well. And what I'm going to do is same colours. I'm just going to stick with the same three colours throughout this one. I think. Let's put some sort of um, sort of land up there to make it all make sense. I'm thinking of like, having these as like mud flats, 
So you have like bits of mud coming across. Dip into the same three colours. When your bush gets too dry, just dip the very tip of it in the water just to loosen it all up again. Focus. Different land up there. For my car, I'm just going to use this knife. It's a it's a Bob Ross oil painting knife. But it does still make some nice rocks with it. Try my best not to overdo, it, but do a few on this side as well. A few distant ones over there. Big one here. Right, what I'm going to do is going to switch to the, uh, the three quarter inch flat. Damp now. I'm going to go into the same three colours. Nice and dark. Stick a boat. Before I do that, I'm going to do a quick dry first. silhouetted against this evening sky. So like I say, nice and dark on the flat brush. A bit more water, just a bit, a bit dry. And there, pop the reflection down. Let's put his mast in. One. Stick another one. And that reflection. Yeah, stick a big mast. I want the mast on the reflection on the land bit. Another one over here. i 
put really big mass on this one. Don't forget the reflections, it's the reflections that really sort of make it. I mean, I'm just going to stick one more, I should put it. I'm going to stick a big one here, I think. Big one there. Yeah. One reflection. And stick this big mass. Have an even bigger mass. Yeah, don't forget the reflection. And switch to the rigger. Let's just put a few little, a few little bits of rigging and stuff. Not forgetting the reflections. Two um, little feathered friends up in the sky. Which we put on. A few little. Three little birds up there. And then finally. Let's just put my signature. Put your name in the corner, and I'm going to call that one. So let's have a closer look at it. So this is our finished painting, so let's go and have a closer look at it. Um, so the first obviously was the sky. Um, and whenever you do a sky, remember if it's if you don't if you're not happy, if it looks a bit boring, bland, dry it, and then re-wet it and carry on with it just to try and get more more layers and textures to it. Used a bit of tissue here to get these white bits of clouds. Just try and keep the variety going. As always I put the distant land in, the same colour as the uh, as the sky just to help really push it back into the distance. You can see how far back this land looks. As I came into the foreground, tried to get it nice and dark generally get your, your strongest tones at the, at the, at the, in the front, in the foreground and then the advantage of that is obviously with the card or your knife you can scrape out these nice looking rocks quite simply but they're quite effective just remember to make them smaller and smaller as they go, as they go off into the distance and of course we need a focal point and these uh, boats look quite nice just floating around in the evening light. Remember to put the reflections in. It's the reflections that really help bring the water to life. A few feathered friends always look nice in the scene. And then as I said at the start, I've tried to preserve this lighter area down the middle. To try and just bring the whole scene to life. Give it a bit of atmosphere. Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.